Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Super excited to have Lisa Steindorf. That's Lisa with a Z, Lisa. I'm very excited. Shattering our own glass ceiling. How many times do we talk about it on the show? How we just want to break through. We want to figure out how to break through. We don't know how to do it. And isn't it wonderful to have somebody on the show who's going to give us some tips, some tricks, uh, and really not tricks, some insights on how she does it, what she teaches, and the classes she offers, and of course, her journey. Welcome, Lisa. How are you? I'm fine, Ted. I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited to have you on. Thank you again for your patience. Of course. Uh, you know, occasionally we have crazy issues with scheduling, and you have been uh, incredibly patient with us. So thank you. All right. Before we went live, I told you the audience absolutely loves Origin Story. They want to know a little bit about you, kind of how you got here, because I always joke that you didn't, you weren't born and then had a shattering our own glass ceiling Barbie. Uh, there were no moments, like, so there's a whole thing that goes on in between. And for a lot of people that that's what they, they go, oh, I did that too. So I can do what Lisa's talking about. So uh, give us the 411. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I really appreciate the way you set that up. It's true. We didn't just land here automatically, right? We have a long journey behind us. So for myself, I grew up in a home of violence. And um, at the time, my dad was a um, veteran from the Vietnam War, and we didn't have the term for PTSD. Now we kind of understand what that's about, but we just received that full frontal rage and, and terror that he embodied. <clears throat> we got that at home. And so I grew up in that and felt very helpless. And my, my managing mechanism was anger. Like if I got angry, at least I could breathe and, and possibly protect myself. And so over the years, however, that really wasn't useful in relationships and also in business. Um, and behind that anger was a whole lot of helplessness and sense of I'm simply not good enough, right? Because as much as I know, both of my parents loved me. They were doing their best given their abilities and, and understanding at the time. Children assume in circumstances like that, that they deserve it. They must do something wrong. They, they are the cause, right? And so I was no different. I just thought, well, I must be the problem in the world. And so I, I didn't know how to figure out what are my skills and my talents and how valuable are they or are they at all? And what do I do with this feeling of I'm not okay and I shouldn't even be here? Isn't that, so I, I feel like that's so important. I'm also a um, childhood domestic uh, abuse, violence, survivor. So when you speak those words, I think there are so many people out there who have never admitted it, never talked about it, and yet it still is the driving force in their life because they haven't. And I see such a beautiful soul. You actually got a beautiful soul comment earlier from Sharon Mundy. Um, and so I feel like people just don't know how to get past it. They don't know how to maneuver through it. You said you were dealing with it. You understood that it wasn't good for relationships and for business. And I think a lot of people, if they would just take the time uh, and not deal with the stigmas that are attached to admitting that God forbid something was not right in my childhood, that they would be so. Well, wonderful. I wish I was as wonderful as you're making me out to be. <laughs> I, I had to get a, a wonderful divine two by four over the head. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we? I actually a couple of them. <laughs> Um, one of them, and you bring up a really good point because my family, you know, my parents had high values and, you know, my, they were representatives in the community and so forth. And I remember one of the very first counseling or therapy sessions that I had, and I said to the therapist, well, I must be at fault or I must not be good enough. And her response blew me away. <clears throat> she said, most, most people who have grown up in abusive families feel that way. And I was like, abusive families what is she talking like i had this vision of you know a broken down trailer with a man with a muscle shirt and beer can in his hand and, you know, and i was like exactly. i'm not in an abusive family am i and so and i will have to say this though i've also turned away for myself from using the word abusive i speak of violence because there's a whole lot of victor and and victim in that word. And so for me, and I will share this about my relationship with my father through the years and the work that I did, I actually came to a really beautiful point with him. And, and I'd be glad to share that story, but I wanted to tell you about the divine two by four. Yes, please. So um, I was at a point, this was in college 
and um, I was at a party and there was this really cute guy I was talking to and I thought things were going really well. And then he said to me, you are so hard. Somebody could walk on you with cleats on and you wouldn't feel it. Wow. And I was like, wow, did he, you know, I might've had a beer or two and I thought, did he really just say that to me? And I turned around and I walked out of that and that changed my life because I recognized what I was putting out in the world is not what I was feeling. And so that's really what put me on, on along with other things, of course, but that was really that two by four was like, wow, you've got some work to do if that's what you're showing in the world. And so I started on my path of, of self-transformation, if you will, um, spiritual work and conflict work and therapy and so forth to come to a place of understanding that, wow, I need to change something within here in order for my world to feel differently for me, even if the world out there doesn't change. I mean, I think that a lot of people need that divine two by four, uh, but we're afraid, right? We, if you lived in that violence uh, world, there's this crazy fear factor that comes up, no matter how much therapy I've been through a million years, I feel like of therapy, uh, you still, there's still this immediate reaction. So you have to figure out how to deal with it. And I love the fact that it was at a college party that you had your epiphany, because I think a lot of us, they, they hear this and then they bury it. They hear their divine message, but they bury it. And so um, if you're a divine person like I am, then you got to get another two by four until it finally sinks in. But I think a lot of people are afraid to admit it because of the stigma attached to it. Yes. And, and there is the vicious cycle because we are still believing then that we are the cause of what happened. Yes. And so a large part of the work that I do now is based on the cognitive behavioral model, um, something I call the control point model, is that it's not, it's literally not what happens. What happens is, is a fact. It's neutral, right? Whatever the, the action was, as horrific as it could be, it doesn't have a value in itself. It's how we view it and what meaning we give it that creates our experience of it. And so I've done a lot of trauma where I had in, in my earlier years to recover, to heal from what I've been through. And one of the biggest input, um, yeah, insights that I had was that my father was doing the best that he had. He wasn't doing this to me. He didn't do it because he hated me. Like he didn't have anything else available to him. And when I understood that, I was suddenly free because like, wow, it had nothing to do with me at all. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he really loved me. That was the best way he knew how to love at that point in time. Right. And that distinction was paramount for my further evolution, if you will, because it now comes up in everything. And if, if we go to what we were, you know, which you invited me to talk about the glass ceiling when I'm in a business meeting, when I'm in a relationship, when I'm in a conversation at a dinner party and people are talking and subjects come up, where am I in my evaluation of myself? Am I putting myself as number two or smaller or maybe coming from ego, bigger, better? Or am I really aware, wow, we are all part of this web. There's no number two and number one. And I'm my own measure of my value. And then I can be who I am in that situation independently of how other people are being or responding to me. I feel like people are out there thinking, oh, my God, I love exactly what she's saying. How do I get there? How? Uh, so maybe if we can give them, obviously, we're both therapy people in some way, shape or form, or at least talking to someone who's a pro that helps us get through it and identify and maybe deal with things. It could be books. It could be an actual therapist. It could be a pastor. It could be your bartender. I'm not sure. But if somebody gives you that epiphany, it's a good thing. But what can people do who are out there thinking, Oh my God, I love what she's saying. I'm suffering through that because it is a suffering, I feel like, until you figure out how to manifest it differently and, mm -hmm. and make it better for you. Uh, what, can, what can you tell them? What kind of tips or maybe some ideas for them to begin the healing on their journey? The first thing, so the I, I have to start a little bit backwards here, Ted, 
um, when I moved to the United States from Europe and I was reestablishing my business name here, the one I'd had in Europe was already taken. So I had to find a new one. I spoke with my son and he said, well, mommy, you do so many different things. What kind of ties it all together? And I said, well, there's definitely clarity and ownership. And then of course, resolution and excellence. And he said, that's core. I said, I know. And he said, no, 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 no. It's an acronym core. <laughs> <E -R -E." laughs> and so I come back to that because first to be really clear about what are your circumstances. Like when I walked out of that party at, at that night, I was like, wow. So I couldn't, I couldn't walk, talk that away. Like this guy said that to me, he experienced me that way. Now I could have judged him, which is why I have my program, the genius of non-judgment. It was like, okay, I'm not going to judge him as being wrong. I'm listening to the fact he experienced me that way. Yes. What if that's so like, what if I really am coming across that hard? Then that's the clarity. Then I have the ownership. I actually present hard or I present loud or I present harsh or whatever, angry, whatever it is. And then if I have that, if I own that, like that's mine, not his, what am I going to do about that? Right. Like I can blame my father. I can blame the world. I can blame the politicians. Or I can say, okay, how am I going to reconcile? How am I going to resolve the issues within myself and whether it is through, uh, you know, a therapist, a friend, trauma work is really hugely important. Somatic experiencing, which is physical trauma work, I can highly recommend. Um, spiritual work, whatever, you know, I've, I'm a student of the um, Course in Miracles, unity work. Um, I study teachings from indigenous people, which is really my path. However you get there, to have that resolution, to find that place within yourself, and then to give yourself permission really to live from excellence. And Ted, people don't like people that are happy and live from excellence. It's true. Oh my God, I'm so glad you said that. It's almost <laughs> like this repellent. Yes. Yeah. Because it's because it makes you know why? People feel so small then, instead of recognizing they are that too. And that's really the that's really the beauty of my work. I feel so lucky because I get to look at people and say, Oh my God, you are so amazing. Like that you do this show. That you show up with the sparkle that you do, that you get excited about people, Ted. Like that's awesome that you bring that into the world. And I get to I get to reflect that back to you and to my clients. And then people can start to say, gosh, is that really true? First, there is that repellence. Like, nope, not me. I couldn't. Well, do that. because because they have never been in a world where they have been taught that they are. Yes. So they have believed the narrative that they were raised with. They believe the narrative that some partner or some student or anybody in their life has told them and they don't realize the amazing human yeah. being that they are. And you would, you would ask the question, what's, what's one thing? And of course, this clarity, ownership, resolution, excellence, those, that's a process. Love it. For me, I think if there's only one thing, it's to make the commitment to use only yourself as your own measure. Yes. It's that simple. Like if I, if I do something and people are like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I don't think it's good enough then it's not good enough. And if I do something and everybody's like, oh my gosh, how could you do that? And I think it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. But I really trust myself as the measure of my own value. And I think that's so important. I think where people, so I've had people who do that. And then there's also a, you know, stepping past that where uh, that creates a, um, I'm never wrong about anything. Mm. and my way or the highway and so you have to have a balance you have to and it's it's for me i'm i don't know 30 i'm older and so i feel like i am constantly a work in progress to figure out that balance and depending on what's going on in my life i tweak it to that but i know people who listen to what you're saying for example and will go okay and then it's like this the whole time it's bravada bravado they're only speaking about themselves and they think everyone else are the paupers underneath and they don't understand that that's just taking it to a whole nother extreme that isn't doing you any good. There's no healing in that. There's no positivity in that. Uh, so you have to find a balance. Well, actually, not even a balance. What you're speaking of is just the flip side of the same coin. Yes. Oh, I'm horrible or oh, I'm better than everybody else. That's not what I'm talking about. Agreed. Agreed. At all. You're right. So you're right. when I'm clear about my value... I can automatically see your value because I'm not having to defend my worthlessness. Yes. 
right? That's so good. So when I stand and you know it from yourself, when you're in a good place, you're feeling good. The first thing you want to do is to say to somebody self, oh my gosh, I think you're wonderful because it just, you really feel that because you're filled up already. Yes. And it's never, I, I do not feel, I know I'm not better than anybody else. It's like saying, what's better, the elephant or the butterfly? Right. Like how, how can you say that? They're just all, both amazing. It's the exact same thing. I bring to the world something completely different than you do. Thank God. Can you imagine a world full of me's? No. One's or, not. Or God, my children and my wife will go, please, no, <laughs> no duplicate of Ted. Uh, that would be, <laughs> we already have enough to deal with on a regular right. basis. And at the same time, I'm sure they would say, thank God. God, there's a Ted in this world. They right? would Begr begrudgingly sometimes, but yes. Uh, you know, and we're so all blessed with that. And I think that was a great point. You're right. It was the same uh, ideals, just on a separate way of doing it, complete uh -huh. opposite spectrum. Exactly. All right, so we, before we went live, we talked about, because obviously I could talk about this forever, so I'm way past the time that, I sh that we normally go, because I want people to pay attention to you. Um, you have classes, so talk a little bit about uh, your classes and, and how people can engage you. Yeah. So I have two, I have a number of classes on teachable and um, that link we can put up the um, genius of non-judgment is a free training. And then I urge everybody to have that. I'm going to see, put on my glasses here. And I don't know if I can, is there a chat box? Yeah. There's a chat there, box. In the comments. Yeah. There's a chat. Okay, box. I'm going to put it in there. Copy and paste it. I'll be happy. So the genius of non-judgment is a really amazing training. And I have other, other trainings up there that people can take. Also, I have two trainings specifically for women. One is the core female leadership that I do within organizations and within their female leadership, and I work with a cohort. The other one is Woman Undaunted Masterclass that I do with individuals that come to me and we create a cohort. Okay. And um, yeah, so good. also, yeah, I do other trainings for individuals and I'm also a coach. So there's a lot of a lot to select from. What I love uh, as you're posting that, the thing, uh, when you told your story, I found it fascinating when that gentleman, when the guy at the college changed the trajectory basically of your thinking, your thought process, your life with just that statement. Um, I feel a strong positive vibe from you. And what I want to tell people is that when you have been through some of the things that you and I have been through, that that's also a work in progress. We're not perfect. It doesn't happen every day. Uh, I am a positive human being, I feel like, and you are too. But sometimes we... It, don't, I don't want people to say I could never be like Lisa. I could never be like Ted. I want them to know that we are constantly in progress and we're always working on ourselves while we are helping the world uh, with the things that they need help with. And that, that measure, Ted, that I was talking about earlier, it is looking at myself when I'm not doing it well. When I see people in my family, if I've, if I've not been fair about something, they say, Hey, you know what, mama, that didn't work very well. And then I look and it's like, wow, you know what? Yes. Gosh, I was so not present to you. I'm sorry. Can we start that again? Or somebody comes to me and says you X, Y, Z. And I look and it's like, you know what? I gave you my whole heart with that. And I'm so sorry you felt it that way, but wow, that's the best I've got. And I think it's okay. I'm sorry. It's not okay for you. Yes. Right. Well, we learn that language. My kids joke with me, my wife too. Oh, that's counselor talk. Well, I've learned. So yes, it probably is because in my mind, I took what I was uh, explained and how I went through my healing. I, I mm -hmm. do speak that language because I know that that's the best way for me to communicate in a positive way mm -hmm. and not be uh, derogatory, not be judgmental, not be accusatory. Yeah. And so occasionally I'm, they're right. I sound like I'm in counselor talk. But, but you know what? Even if you were there, it's not, it's a lot easier to connect with somebody there than someone who's yelling at you. A, a thousand percent. And, and that's one of the, what I grew up with, which I assume you did too. Right. Well, I was told that I, you know, I should just be quiet because I was only, I was only a female. I was only little. Yeah. And the one training that I have on teachable um, connected communication is really about connection and how I can do that with other people and what tools there are for that. So it's useful.
what you do, I feel like the work that you do is a is a is for humanity, and I mean that uh, in a kind way, like a, a way that I don't I don't want to say, oh my God, you're you're saving humanity, but in reality, you are helping people save themselves and work on themselves one person at a time, and and if anybody doesn't understand the power of one right. person making the ripple effect of that. Uh, you are missing out. If you can change your life, imagine the lives around you yeah. that get impacted and changed. All right, Lisa, tell them the best way they can reach you, find out more about you, uh, get involved, sign up to be a client of yours. I want them to do all of those things. Well, it would be Lisa at lisasteindorf.com. And I'm putting that also in the chat box. Wonderful. And I have also put the other trainings up there. Um, I have one there. I'm going to post the other two. We've got one going. We're going to do the other two. And then I'm going to share this as well. Okay. Um, I want people to reach out to you because I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity uh, via the hurt that people have yeah. uh, that they're not dealing with. And if they can figure out a way, find a safe place, mm -hmm. someone who's listening to them that has been there that can help them maneuver through. Yeah, uh, there's so much opportunity for people out there. And, and I a lot, also, I do a lot of talks, Ted. And so it's useful. People have me come into their church groups, into their conventions, into their business meetings and to speak to whatever issues are there or just to speak on subjects in general, including communication. And that's really useful as well. So I'd love to serve that way also. Fantastic. Lisa, you're a joy. I got so much yeah. out of today. I needed that. So you know how things come in. I'm a big believer in that. Very yeah. powerful and motivating. Feel better. Uh, you know, you, we all need that recharge. Yeah. And so right. I think a lot of people don't take advantage of the resources or are afraid to engage a coach, uh, someone who can help them through uh, mm -hmm. because of the stigma. And I just want to encourage you all. Reach out to Lisa um, listen to her. She's, she offers some free classes. So get used to her, but I want you to engage with Lisa and Lisa, you're a joy. Come back on anytime, anything you have, you want to talk about, you think something the world needs to hear. I would be honored to have you on. Oh, thank you, Ted. It'd be my pleasure. And thank you for doing what you're doing. Oh, well, thank you. All right. Lisa Steindorf, lisasteindorf.com. You can reach out to her at Lisa at lisasteindorf.com, I believe. And of course, we'll tag, we've tagged her and everything. We put the classes in there uh, in the comments. Reach out to me if you need to get in touch with her. You guys have a great day. We will see you soon. Bye, everybody.